How are y'all doing? Great. I am definitely not technical. <laughs> I have a PowerPoint here. Oh, yeah. All you gotta do is a share screen. Yeah. All right. Right, so press the share screen button. Anyway, my name is Nate Long. I'm the president of Quest Trust Company. And I imagine most of uh, what Quest does is we just, we're a trust company that just specializes in self directed retirement accounts. So holding unusual assets into the retirement accounts. I'm not going to bore you. Most of you know what self directed companies do that you can take your retirement account and you can buy real estate or do a loan or oil and gas or whatever else. But I do want to talk about uh, something that I can think is different out there today that can solve a lot of problems. And um, what's different isn't the product, but the technology available to use the product. And I'm talking about a, what's called an individual or a solo 401k. I actually like to call them owners only 401k because you don't have to be an individual or be a solar. But this can solve a lot of the problems that people have been having um, in when we're investing with into syndications with our retirement accounts with unrelated business income tax. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Getting closer. I know. I'm, I'm, I, I can still keep going. Trust me. I can pontificate for a long, long time. I, I, I'm on the disclaimer fly. We don't give tax legal investment advice. We don't give any products. We don't give any other things. You know, if it's messed up, you guys did it, not us. I don't know. Something like that on the disclaimer page. So, uh, first of all, I think that when you're looking at something like this, often people don't understand the problem of unrelated business income tax or how to apply it or, or what to do with this. And so we'll take a little bit of time and we'll look at why a person would want one of these type of retirement accounts over an uh, IRA or something, then we'll break down to some of the problems. And then, you know, as we look at different problems, we'll look at the solutions to it. But honestly, a solo 401k is allowed to do a lot of things that an IRA can't do. Um, that being said, they're very complicated. And the complication, I think, uh, doesn't make them for everybody, for sure, even even with some of the new technology. I always always like to say, you know, don't drive a semi to the store to get a loaf of bread if you've got a Volkswagen parked out front, right? You know, often the simplest thing is, is the most, you know, and everyone's trying to build this uh, big workout. But there are four serious advantages to having a solo 401k over an IRA, and if you have a need for one of those advantages, it's worth looking for, or one of your clients, you can save a lot of money in taxation for one. What, what are the different, the, the, the different needs that they have? One of them is you can make larger contribution limits on very small amounts of money, right? A lot of my clients end up having a lot of investment income but have very very little amount of earned income or what we call qualified income right they don't have very much money to put in retirement accounts well with a solo 401k you can make large contributions giving large Roth contributions as well as um, uh, traditional contributions because you're acting as both the employee and the employer Basically, you get to add in all your SEP contributions like an employer would that's about 20% of your Schedule C income if you're getting it that way, 25% of the W-2 otherwise. And then you get to put on your other hat as an employee and contribute again. And this contribution amount could be quite larger. God help me. I hope I get it right. $29,000, I think, if you're over 50 with the $7,000 of catch-up. And that money can be contributed as a Roth contribution regardless of your income limit. So a lot of people who don't have the ability to make a Roth contribution could put a sizable one in a solo 401k. So advantage one is large contributions, right, even on small amounts of money. Uh, one of the other advantages or the next advantages would be checkbook control. Some of our clients are buying real estate. I'm saying it's not just a syndication. We're just not writing one check, right? We're fixing up property. We're doing all types of stuff. They're managing something in that. 
When you do this, the IRA world has kind of developed an LLC, put an LLC inside of an IRA, and that's okay. And I, I, I'm telling you, I think that's always been dangerous, and I think it's even much more dangerous nowadays that the IRS is collecting information as to who's holding LLCs inside their IRAs. And that I think that you're dealing with self-dealing, right? I think I've always said that there should be a separation if you're going to do that. In other words, you should be the managing member of that LLC. Well, when you have a solo 401k, that's removed. You are the trustee of that account. You get to make all the decisions. You get to hold of the checkbook. You're the one that's signing the document that's closing, not your uh, custodian, right? You're in complete control. I will add, when I get to the problem, that's one of the problems, too. There is no oversight. You're just hanging out there, right? And a lot of our clients get in trouble with uh, uh, solo 401ks versus any other product out there. Uh, um, often, I'm asked, I forgot this slide, often I'm asked, like, when people are talking, like, what's better, a 401k or an IRA? And they, I've even had people want me to do like this debate on stage about the two and things. And it's completely two different things. A retirement account needs to be a robust thing. And we use different tools in different areas. Most of us use our employment plan to make the larger portion of our contributions still carrying a Roth IRA. And they always run in tandem with each other, especially if you have a Roth 401k. You don't want, you want to make sure you have a Roth IRA even if you have to do a conversion to create it, so you've had one for more than five tax years at the time that you shut down your 401k, because a 401k is not a Roth IRA, and you want to burn off, there's a requirement to have it not only be above the age of 15 and a half, but have had a Roth IRA for five tax years. So some of your high-end clients may not have had access to a Roth IRA. They have a Roth solo 401k, or some type of 401k, but not solo. Uh, they should be running, or somehow figure out how to get a Roth IRA to run in tandem with that, even if they do a small uh, conversion. So here, I was discussing the advantage. We talked about uh, uh, the ability for uh, uh, large contributions to yourself. Was I right? No, it's even higher. It's $76,000 uh, on, on the contribution. But and when we're doing the contributions, it's important to understand that there's different ways to get money into 401k. We can put money in as the employer, and that could be a traditional, or that's a traditional tax deferred. And then as the employee, we can put money in as, as a Roth contribution or a traditional contribution. And we can have rollover contributions from other plans. But all of these must be tracked separately in the accounting as we do it, right? So that's uh, important. One of the, the other advantages is it allows you to invest in anything. In. You know, most of my clients will hold an account with Quest and they got their IRA and they invest in the weird stuff, you know, their syndications and their loans or whatever with them. And then they have an account with someone else and we're transferring back and forth between the traditional custodian and not. You can hold all the different types of account under one envelope inside of a solo 401k very easy. You have your brokerage account, you have all that, you have the checkbook, you have the control as manager. But I think the one thing that I like to focus in with the solo 401k is there is an absolute exemption to a tax that can really hit people hard, uh, which is unrelated business income tax as it relates to debt finance. Ooh, that's exciting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's talk about it. I want to describe a problem, and then we'll describe what different solutions to it. And what I'm talking about is unrelated business income tax. There are situations where retirement accounts, as they invest into things, create taxation, right? This is not taxation to the individual who owns the retirement account. The retirement account itself has to pay tax. Typically, that's running a business. Is it illegal to run a business inside your Roth IRA? Nope, you can do it. But you can't manage it. You can't pay yourself, right? And if you earn money on that, you're going to have to pay a very onerous tax, unrelated business income tax, because if you didn't, 
you'd be competing against other people who are having to pay tax and therefore you could sell your product cheaper. So that's always been a problem. Most people don't run a business inside an IRA because of these rules. You know, you're going to pay so much tax on it, it doesn't make sense. There are people who do it because the end result is to try to shift the money into that Roth IRA, then and they can continue to invest tax-free. Most of my clients don't get hit with this, right? There are a few people who rent personal property that is considered running a business, like uh, renting mobile homes or uh, medical equipment. I see uh, equipment to do oil wells and things like that. Please get it. But the other side of it gets us. It's the debt finance side. And let me explain. If we go and buy real estate, Let's say just for simplicity, we're buying a house. We buy a house for $100,000, right? We didn't have $100,000. We only had $40,000 in the retirement account. We put $40,000 down. We went to a non-recourse bank, you know, Fortis Bank or something like that. And they gave us a loan for 60%. Everyone follow that? That means I'm 60% debt leveraged when I buy that house. The very next day, I sell the house. I sell it for $200,000 in my store. I made $100,000 in profit. Because that, that, that is 60% debt leveraged, 40% of that goes to the IRA tax-free, but the $60,000 is subject to tax. Tax at what rate? Well, in my store, I only sold the house in one day, so I didn't get a capital gains treatment. I'm going to pay ordinary income tax rate, but at a trust rate. So in other words, it just shoots right up to the top, somewhere around $14,000 on fan top tax rate. Sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? You know, and, until you think about it, I took $40,000, I got it back in one day, I got another 40000 and I had to split the sixty with Uncle Sam. Sign me up. The problem with the story is it's not true, right? <laughs> it, not, that, not that it actually created taxes. But there's the problem. And this, uh, this also affects us with capital gains as well as debt leverage uh, uh, income. Now, if we hold the property over a year, we will switch to a capital gains treatment on that. But regardless, one of the big problems is this also affects syndication. If my client has gone out um, and invested in a apartment complex, an apartment complex is typically owned by an LLC that's a pass-through entity. They're using seed money. As that creates profit, that profit is taxable to the IRA. They fill out their own tax return called 990P, right? And often people did not realize they would have to pay that tax as they entered into the deal. Some, you know, deal sponsors, I know it's hard to believe, might just leave that little detail out, you know? Not all of them. I mean, not the guys here. They would come here and think. So this is one of the things that is one of the advantages is with a solo 401k, if you hold the prop, if you if it if it's debt leveraged and it's real estate, and you do have to meet the requirement of holding it for one year, you do this same deal inside a 401k. It's a complete exemption. The tax just flat goes away. Now, what's cool about it is you can often use this exemption, right? Even after the fact. If I bought into an apartment complex. I could, down the line, prior to receiving the payout or the profit, as long as I could try to time it prior to that, I could transfer that asset from a traditional IRA, SEP IRA, or solo 401k. A Roth IRA cannot be transferred into a Roth 401k. But any of those other types of accounts, we could move it into a 401k. How long do we have to hold the property? A year. Doesn't mean you have to have the 401k open for a year. You had to hold the property for a year. Everyone got it? So you could sometimes move it over just before it and instantly solve the taxation problem, sometimes saving thousands upon thousands of dollars on one transaction for the right type of client, right? It's done really well in one of these things. So I think that's cool to be able to pick it up afterwards, okay? So it sounds pretty cool. What is the problem, right? A solo 401k actually has its own set of problems that are pretty serious to deal with, right? So again, if you don't have an advantage, I don't need to make larger contribution limits, right? I don't need the checkbook control, you know, or I don't need the, the uh, unrelated business income tax exemption. 
don't use a 401k. Go to an IRA or something cheaper, right? It doesn't make any sense, okay? So that. So what are the, the problems? The first problem is what we call legitimize. You can't go, wow, that 401k is really cool. I want one, right? You actually have to have a, a reason for it. You have to have income. And that income has to be some form of self-employment income, right? Now, your spouse could be or your business partner could be in. That's okay. You have a people as long as it's all owners only. Does that make sense? So you, and how is it that we know that you have income? Is you've turned it in on your tax return, right? And there's one final step. You have to make a contribution into the 401k. This cannot be a rollover contribution has to be a contribution on that first year based off of income. So this is where it leads to two problems. One, if you don't have any self-employment income, you can't have one, right? What's the other one? Little pesky things. I got a bunch of them. I got 140 of them. They're called common law employees. If you do have employees that won't work, even if the employees are in a different company, right? There's grouping rules that, it, you know, you can't provide benefits to one company you own that another one doesn't. So if, if you're a pretty good uh, percentage owner of a company that has common law employees, you may not be eligible for a solo 401k. You might want to talk to one of our IRA specialists, right? So how do, you, how do we solve this uh, problem? I've seen, I can't fix the employee problem unless you just want to fire all your employees. You know? uh, Sarah, that's probably not a good idea, right? No, okay. Uh, but the other problem, I've seen a lot of people create a small amount of income. There's nothing in the codes that say you have to have a large amount of income, and you can still have a W-2 job with a full 401k at work, and you could have a little bit of self-employment income, right? Uh, as little as maybe 500 bucks, as long as you could show that on your tax return and make that current year contribution in that first year you open it, you can legitimize that 401k, okay? So again, you can have multiple 401ks, you cannot double up the employee contribution. You know, you can't max it out in both places, but you, it, it, it's only one, but you can do it too. I've seen people sell some stuff online, you know, just and turn in tax return, just create a little bit of income. Or they already had some income once they started thinking about they didn't consult or something along those lines. Like that. If anyone have any questions, you can ask it. Stop so uh, three minutes left. Yeah, go. Yeah, so like to me, for example, I've got this like, tiny little side business, but I have an equity partner here at Jackson Walker. We have 401k. I, I switched it to Roth two years ago. Max, you know, it gets the right. every year. So you're saying, so, so you don't increase your, you, you just like an IRA, you have a, a total contribution. Total contribution, but you can break it out into two places. But if, but if I, let's say I reduced my one here at work a little bit, I could create one for my other business. Right. But then what does that give me, like your examples with, you know, stuff? Putting real estate in, right? Or whatever. I mean, isn't that all subject to the contribution limit? Like, how much can you really put in? No, you can transfer in as much as you have. You're, I'm assuming that real estate's in another, another thing. You can transfer as much as you have. There's no contribution limits to how much you can transfer in. So you can take your SEP IRAs, your traditional IRAs, other employer plans, and transfer them in. All right? Other problems. I'm going to go fast because of the, man, the reporting is ridiculous on these type of accounts. Okay? The problem is, you have to report your own 1099Rs, and then you have to track those different contributions. And also, you may invest with it differently. You might want to invest your Roth funds one way and your traditional funds. And I've never, even people with very experienced uh, accounting, don't have the accounting and the things to go together to be able to do it. I've been selling these for years, and they terrify me, to tell you the truth. They're, they're very powerful, but you just basically give plan documents and go, here you go, thanks, you know. Let me know when you're in trouble, basically. Okay. And again, the, the record keeping from all the different things. Um, and there's also no oversight. Um, so what we have is I have a program now that will guide someone through exactly what to do with each contribution. It will break everything up. And you have the full power of Quest and all of our IRA specialists to be able to uh, go through it. So your, your clients can do this really easily without messing up. Every time they put a check in, you know, automatically figure it out if the assets divide it up into different things. Every time you purchase an asset, it will ask all the questions and force you into it. It does all these things that they can't do because I'm running out of time. And again, 
uh, 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 it does all this other stuff that, you can, that no, no one else does but I have time. But the big thing is that it automatically helps with fill out the forms for the government reporting and does the different accounting of things. And it does cost more than an IRA. It's somewhere north of $100 a month where you can get a self-directed IRA for somewhere around 30 bucks a month. So again, it, it, it is the Mack truck. It's used for a lot of different things, uh, but it is a little bit different. You guys have never heard of us. West Trust Company has been around a long time. We're not the largest. We do pride ourselves on education. I have over 40 IRA services professionals that work for me. Um, so when you call up, you'll actually get someone on the phone to talk to you. They will talk to your clients and treat them like regular people, you know, as well as you. Uh, we provide a lot of education, and that's free. And it's also free of salesmanship or anything else because um, we never have a horse in the race, right? on there and we have a big expo coming up we're not in the expo business guys but has anyone here ever been to one of our expos right this is cool isn't it like i, I go to expos all the time because of things and uh, yeah what's cool about quest expo is the level of people that come are really cool. uh, there is much higher there this is going to be an irving convention center it's a really sexy building with all types of cool pictures you know come and expose yourself to some of the things if you have any questions about Quest or need anything, it's easiest way to go. You can hit the QR code here, but also just online. Our chat, our live chat is real live people. You can pick up the phone or you can talk to an IRA specialist. Uh, Sarah happens to be an IRA specialist that's back in the room. I think she's been with our company for nine years. There, there. Contact information and all that. How do I do that? Make